Welcome to this presentation on the enhancement plans for the Church of St. Thomas the Apostle in Del Mar, New York. This presentation is designed to share the reasons and the details of the enhancement plans developed over the 18 months that the Church Enhancement Committee has learned together and worked together. These enhancements, we believe, will dramatically improve the liturgical experience of our friends, relatives, and fellow parishioners at St. Thomas. Our 50-plus year old church building is ready for updating and with 50 years of Vatican II theology development, St. Thomas is ready to fully implement and embrace that council, most especially the call of the Constitution on the Sacred Liturgy for the full, conscious, and active participation by all the baptized in the sacred mystery of the Eucharist, the source and summit of our faith. The Church Enhancement Committee was initially formed to address the permanent locating of the music ministry and the baptismal font. Little did we know that we would be drawn into deep education on the theology of liturgy and the reforms of Vatican II. Following that education and our own self-study, the committee determined that enhancement was needed for the following reasons. To achieve that full, conscious, and active participation of the community in the sacrifice of the Mass. To gather together in community around the Lord to hear the word and the homily clearly, to bring everyone closer to the altar so even the children can see the word proclaimed and the body raised, to reconnect with our own baptism each time we enter the church, to provide dedicated space to the music ministries, including a permanent space for the donated baby grand piano, to make our 50-year-old church fully accessible for disabled parishioners and clergy, through these enhancements, we expect to re-energize the parish community. As mentioned earlier, Vatican II made it crystal clear that we don't come together every Sunday to watch a priest perform the Mass. We actually come together to fully, consciously, and actively participate in the sacrifice of the Eucharist. The Enhancement Committee adopted this goal as the primary goal of church enhancement. As Christians, we enter the church the body of Christ, through our baptism. Symbolically, we can relive that great event each time we enter the church building and pass by a font of living water. We can also make full immersion baptism for adults, the method of baptism practiced by our earliest Christian ancestors, available in the future. We started the enhancement conversation specifically to provide a permanent place for the music ministry, and that remains a key goal. Many parishioners find great comfort in silent prayer before the true presence of the Lord in the tabernacle. Returning our tabernacle to the main church and providing a private chapel for silent prayer and adoration became one of our goals. We are all aging and living longer, frequently with challenges to our ability to get around. Our church building needs to meet the needs of our aging and disabled parishioners. We also need to make sure we will have clergy to celebrate the Eucharist with us, even when most clergy are aged and possibly disabled. Finally, how effective is a Mass when the congregation cannot hear clearly or see their worship aids? With a church building that hasn't been painted in almost 30 years, interior work is critical, as is ensuring very high-quality acoustics, lighting and seating that is comfortable and avoids crashing kneelers. As a reminder, it is important to share the process followed by the parish and the enhancement committee leading to this presentation and our enhancement plans. Late in 2011, plans were completed for the final piece of our last church building project, replacing the 50-year-old heating system and adding air conditioning to the church. To implement the new HVAC, it became clear that the organ would need to be moved and that would move the existing font. Father Hayes invited a committee of parishioners and liturgical staff to form a master planning committee. At the suggestion of the diocese, Father Hayes invited Father Richard Vosco, a nationally known sacred space design expert and member of the Architectural and Building Commission of the diocese to educate the committee. After several sessions with Father Vosco and reading his book and the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Sacred Space Document, called Built of Living Stones, the committee asked Father Vasco to provide a condensed but similar education to the parish at large, which he did, holding two programs in the chapel, 
each with approximately 50 attendees. We also decided to provide bulletin inserts on sacred space. Following this education, the committee developed goals for the master plan and then solicited, with Father Vasco's assistance, bids from architectural firms with sacred church space experience. The committee dedicated a Saturday to interviewing three firms and ultimately selected the Kearns Group architects, who are also doing work, with St. Vincent de Paul and St. Edward the Confessor parishes, and with the Carmelite sisters for the aged and infirmed in Germantown in our diocese. Parishioners may be interested to note that the architectural firm that Father Hayes had used in two previous parishes was interviewed, but was not the one that the committee selected. Sean Riley, from the Kearns Group Architects, met with the committee, visited the church several times, including during weekend masses, and met with members of the parish staff to develop a needs and wants assessment. He ultimately presented three alternative designs that could meet the needs and wants of the parish, and the committee reviewed and debated those designs. Ultimately, the committee requested a fourth design that had elements of, the two, of two of the ones Sean originally produced. The committee worked with Sean on multiple iterations of that fourth version, making improvements and containing costs until it became the design that the committee and Sean presented to the parish in June. Since those meetings, the committee has considered parishioner feedback and finalized the plan presented here. The Church Enhancement Committee very much appreciated the constructive comments provided by parishioners at the meetings. We strongly agreed with parishioners who encouraged us to really go the extra mile to make the church building fully and completely accessible for people with disabilities. We made sure that we researched mass attendance numbers to ensure that our plans would not create a regular challenge for accommodating parishioners during weekend liturgies. We recognize that we will be sitting with and next to others in the new space, but that is an intentional part of establishing the full active participation of our community. We also worked with the Finance Committee to ensure that there would be a sufficient, in fact well beyond sufficient by diocesan standards, reserve fund beyond the cost of the church enhancements. We carefully evaluated the 50 plus year old pews and will instruct the construction manager architect to get bids for refurbishing those pews in addition to quotes for new pews so that we will be as efficient and environmentally friendly as possible. We also want to note that much of the material for the newly located altar, ambo, and font will come from our existing furnishings. Finally, we met on multiple occasions with the parish council to ensure that we had their input and support and received similar encouragement from the music ministries. Now, let's take a look at the physical changes to the church building that will be a part of church enhancement. After reviewing the floor plan in some detail, we can take a look at the architect's sketch of a parishioner's view of the enhanced worship space. In this floor plan view, we can see a number of the enhancements that are planned. At number one, the entrance to the church nearest the parking lot will become fully accessible with concrete ramps replacing stairs and an automatic door that can open from the push of a button. In addition to an automatic door for our parishioners with disabilities, just inside the entrance to the church from Adam's Place, we see the relocated and larger baptismal font. The vision of this space is to include a large pool capable of supporting full immersion baptism, as well as, hopefully, the current font set up as a source of living water, pouring quietly into the larger font. As we enter the church, we remember how we, and every Catholic before us, entered Christ's church through baptism. Think of how moving it will be to have the casket of a deceased parishioner pause as she or he is welcomed into the church for the final time at the beginning of the funeral mass. You'll notice that the altar is relocated to the main church at approximately the first stained glass window. This location allows for no seat to be more than 65 feet from the altar and allows us to gather around the body of Christ in the Mass as a community actively and consciously participating with the priest in the sacrifice of the Mass. Please note that the altar platform will also be fully accessible for both clergy and for ministers of the Word and extraordinary ministers of the Eucharist who will not need to walk up steps if they are unable to do so. 
behind the new altar, but in front of the current sanctuary, is the permanent location of the music ministry. In an elongated rectangular building, the proper acoustics for music require a choir or music group to participate from one long end or the other. This will improve acoustics and provide for permanent locating of the piano and other components required for traditional and contemporary music. Behind the choir and music ministry is an accessible ramp that will allow parishioners to access the former sanctuary level, currently not possible for people with disabilities, and thus access to the Adoration Chapel. The relocated tabernacle, visible but not distracting to the main church and available for private devotion and adoration in the former Lady Chapel. And finally, the former sanctuary area remains available for overflow seating for Christmas, Easter, and Palm Sunday. Here we see a slightly angled view from the main aisle. We see that the community truly gathers around the altar, and yet the visual impression one has upon entering the church is very similar to the current impression, with the crucifix remaining at the far end. We can imagine from this view the young child who is near the back of the church, but can still see clearly, and hear clearly with corrected sound, all that is happening, and thus, in her own way, become a full, active, and conscious participant in keeping with her true dignity as a baptized member of the body of Christ. Thank you for reviewing this presentation. The Church Enhancement Committee will host two final meetings to discuss the enhancement plans on November 18th in the afternoon and in the evening in the Media Center at the school. Parishioners are invited to provide final comments at those meetings and in writing addressed to the Church Enhancement Committee. A week after the final meetings, the committee will meet and make a final recommendation to Father Hayes and if he approves, to the Architecture and Building Commission at the Diocese. Pending those decisions, a formal announcement of the plans will be provided to the parish. Thank you again for your interest in your parish and our Church Enhancement plans. If you have a desire to learn more about church architecture, Please see the next slide for some additional information opportunities. Thank you again.